2023 is here and it's already being a dirty hoe. Yeah, I said it. 2023, you are coming in as a little dirty hoe. First thing you do is take Gangsta Boo. Now, I'm not the biggest Gangsta Boo fan. I never really was. But I appreciate her contributions to hip hop, being a member of 3-6 Mafia. Then, right after that, 2023, you come in here and try to take out one of the A6, one of the original Avengers. Jeremy Renner had a snowplow accident that damn near killed him. I'm just saying 2023, come in, just, here's what I want you to do. I want you to come in, come into our lives. I want you to sit down. Don't touch anything or anybody and keep your mouth shut. That's all I want you to do. And we can all have a great year. And for any of you who are claiming 2023 is your year, I'm holding you personally responsible for all the bullshit that comes with it. Just saying. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks. This is Do You Speak Geek? D-Y-S-G Keep it real, that's key We the best OGs Dope topics, come see D-Y-S-G Keep it real, that's key We the best OGs Dope topics, come see I got a question, do you speak geek? Yeah. New episodes on the podcast dropping each uh-huh. week Get hip to the game, I'm giving y'all a sneak yeah. peek Flavor for your ears, bars flowing on unique Beats, blurs and nerds, freaks and geeks. The source wall wins. They dropping comics. You should cop. I think you don't up cheap. Don't sleep on Dono and Nicks. They preaching the gospel. Real ish, ill like mono. They sick. Thumb life if you're into games with combos and kicks. This podcast is a gift. It's as real as it gets. Blurs taking over. With clever marketing, we gain exposure. Feeding the community magic. Your boy's a nerd promoter. The dialogue is Jimmy Crack Corn. We aiming for gold. The truth is told. I can't speak for other platforms. Sharp as cats out like knives, claws, and tack thorns. We blacking out, going crazy. Crazy like a black storm. D-Y-S-G, don't forget to follow back. Hosting on the airwaves, always keeping it a stack. Flowers to my haters, psych, I ain't giving y'all jack. Number one on the charts, give your boy a gold plaque. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Nick's back again. Happy New Year to everybody out there. I hope you all came in here nice, feeling great about yourselves, very positive, taking on this new year. Happy New Year to everyone. 2023 is here, and this is the podcast, episode 139. What's good, y'all? Your boy, Nick's is back again with the pod. Thank you for everyone who has been listening all year. And for those who are new this year, if this is your first episode, hey, welcome. This is Do You Speak Geek. This is the podcast. We bring you all the latest and grace inside of the geek realm. Shout out to Spreaker, the home team. But wherever you get your podcast, no matter the platform, no matter the outlet, search for Do You Speak Geek and hit that subscribe. And please follow us on social media, Facebook, DYSGFB, Twitter, DYSG underscore tweets, Twitch, DYSG underscore games, and Instagram, TikTok, and Quirk Chat at Do You Speak Geek. The YouTube channel, the only place where you can find the Donald and Daddy show. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave comments. We want to know what you guys think. New video just dropped this past Friday. We are back again with First Friday Fights. Ronin versus Snake Eyes. Hmm. Pretty decent verses, if I may say so. Please be sure to go check that, like it, share it, and uh, let us know what you think. Me and Donald kind of work hard on that one. We've been gone for a minute, so we're back. Um, new videos also still coming soon. I got two more coming this month, and um, more content coming for y'all. So just uh, stay with us, and we're going to keep it rolling. All right. 
Not a lot to talk about this week, but we're going to get into the pod anyway. As always, people, let's do what we do about this time. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. All right, we got the reviews coming at you at Rapid Fire. Velma, Season 1, Episodes 1 through 8. Raunchy humor and some smart story beats make Velma a genuinely fun ride for the most part, but it would have been elevated to must-watch status had it gone a different direction with the glasses-wearing star. It seemed like it may have been good, but it's kind of mid. Anyway, check it out at your own discretion. <laughs> Kaleidoscope, Season 1, it's... A most interesting for its construction and presentation using the quasi choose your own adventure approach to pull the audience into its style and high storytelling. It's great to see Giacano Esposito top lining his own series that she does very well, acting his ass off. Uh, the ensemble is engaging, if a bit tame. If you love high stories, it's an experiment worth watching, but. It won't rank as seminal work in the genre regardless of its distinct presentation. So check that out. It's still dope either way. The Bad Batch, Season 2, Episodes 1 through 14. The Bad Batch is back in fine form for Season 2, shining when it dives deep into the greater effects of the Empire that it had on the galaxy during the dark times. Check that one out. And finally, we have Megan. Uh, Megan capably proves herself more than a horror villain meme, although the film does sometimes struggle to balance the horror and the comedy. Mm, check it out. I'm not really a big horror guy either way, so it's a decent film. Check it out when you get a chance. Let's go ahead and hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the source wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pull list this week we have The Flash 790. As any super speedster worth their salt will tell you, time can move pretty slow for the incredibly fast. So what happens when an entire armada of conquering speedster aliens show up on Earth's doorstep? The most intense battle the Earth has ever waged in the span of 60 seconds begins. Ooh, man, getting ready for that one-minute war in February is going to be fire. I can't wait. I am Batman number 17. Following the shattering revelations of the previous issue, Jace must set aside his renewed bitterness toward his father and go save his mother. But Jace doesn't go at it alone. Get ready or not, Tiff steps up as New York's newest hero. So, the black Batman of New York gets a sidekick. That's what's up. Let's, let's see what it is, y'all. Spawn, unwanted violence number one. Information can be one of the most valuable resources in the world. It can also be one of the most difficult to obtain. Luckily for Spawn, he has the Freak. The Freak is a master of getting what he needs out of the subject. But as the Freak works at extracting the whereabouts of File F, Al witnesses an act of senseless violence, one that he can't ignore. The writing of Todd McFarlane meets the incredible art of Mike Del Mundo, in Spawn, Unwanted Violence, a two-part miniseries that forces Spawn to confront the very nature of good and evil. Should be fire, y'all. This one's worth a watch. Check it out. Miles Morales, Spider-Man number two, Spidey versus the Scorpion Sting. Miles Morales' world is spinning out of control. A mysterious new threat is rising and coming at Spider-Man hard. And if Spidey doesn't fight back with everything he's got, he could lose everything. What does this new villain have to do with Misty Knight's investigation and a slew of upgraded foes like the Scorpion terrorizing NYC? 
this battle is going to change Spidey's life forever. Someone's not walking away from this one. Oh my God, what is he talking about? Monica Rambeau, Photon, number two, going above and beyond. Have you ever had one of those days where everything is going wrong? Sheesh, have I? <laughs> like you've somehow been sucked across the infinite cosmos into the wrong corner of fragmented space and time? <laughs> it's me. It's me. <laughs> and you run to someone from your past you really can't stand? Oh my gosh, book about me. Like, say someone from beyond? If so... Maybe you'll have some good advice for Monica. She'll take what she can get. Monica, I got no advice for you. I don't, I don't even know what to do with my damn self. Mm. But sounds like it's interesting. Let's go. Batman, One Bad Day, Catwoman number one. Selena Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman, is the greatest thief in Gotham City has ever seen. She's effortlessly stolen countless items of immense value over the years, and successfully evade the GCPD and Batman. But when Catwoman finds out an item from her past is being sold for way more than it used to be worth, it sends Catwoman into a spiral, and she'll do everything in her power to steal it back. Batman tries to stop her before she goes too far, and the mysterious figure known as the Forger will change Catwoman's life forever. The all-star creative team of G. Willow Wilson and Jamie McClever unite this epic story. Eey. Yo, the one, the one bad day series has been pretty dope. I've enjoyed it. And finally, we have Wildcats number three. The Halo Corporation has introduced their new group of heroes to the world. The seven soldiers of victory are here to save the day. Wait, what? Hmm, pretty decent. Check that one out, y'all. And also all the other ones I mentioned this Wednesday at your local comic book store. Now, in Source Wall News, spoiler, this is from the Joker, the man who stopped laughing, number four. The Joker becomes, I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> the Joker becomes pregnant. Oh, my. Hey, yo. Just stay with me, okay? Stay with me. So, this story shows a confrontation between Joker and Zatanna as the latter foils the Clown Prince's crimes plot to steal Gotham's war supply. Is it always the water supply? Anyway, disgusted by Joker's flirtation, Zatanna casts one of her signature backward spells on in your ears. Translation No one else will ever have your baby. That spell winds up having some unintended consequences. Joker wakes up the next morning to discover he's suddenly nine months pregnant and ready to pop. <laughs> he then vomits up a blob of sentient mud and it quickly morphs into a tiny Joker doppelganger. You can't imagine Zatanna is going to be thrilled to turn of events or Batman for that matter. But the outrage <laughs> that came behind this book. I mean, there are people who are just saying how, oh God, no, this is this is stupid. DC Comics has completely fell off now. This is catering to some political agenda and it's it's trying to, it's trying too hard to be anti misogynistic and it's like like all of y'all who are wilding out, like, chill. Like did you did you read the comic? Did you read it? Like, do you know that this is not some sort of a permanent canonical thing? She cast a spell on him for him to vomit up mud and it morphed into a doppelganger. Like, y'all got to chill out. <laughs> y'all really, y'all really, really got to chill. Okay. It's not that serious. Calm down. It's funny because it's ridiculous. And there have been ridiculous things throughout all the comics but chill okay y'all just 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 fall back all right just relax Whew. let's watch this watch this y'all thunder 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 the lannister always pays his debts whoa dude 
I am the villain of the story. All right, people, let's get into it. Idris and Sabrina Elba's fantasy series, Dentai. Now, Crunchyroll and the production companies of Idris Elba and his wife, Sabrina, are joining forces for an animated fantasy series with the working title, Dan- Dentai. I think that's how it's pronounced. The news about the project comes as Crunchyroll's also report surpri- surpassing the 4 million subscribers mark. So, hey, 4 million subscribers for Crunchyroll? Hey, round of applause for that. So this is described as a dark fantasy and an Afro-futuristic science fiction series. Dantai comes from Idris Elba's Green Door Pictures and Sabrina Elba's Pink Towel Pictures. Mmm, pink and green. Skiwi! <laughs> Each as an executive producer, the series will be set in a city where the rise of biotechnology has created an ever-widening gap between the haves and have-nots, according to the official logline. Two rising stars from either side of this divide are pitted against each other in a story that will ultimately explore equality and kinship within a corrupted society. A quote from the Elba saying, We are really excited to be announcing this deal with our first anime, we're both fans of the genre and see huge opportunity to create something unique from a powerhouse like Crunchyroll. The story of Dantai is our first collaboration as producers together and is one that is close to our hearts. Ah, don't you just love blurred couples getting their, getting their power on? Yeah, I like this. I guess that's, that's what's up. Look at this blurred couple killing it in the game of anime and Crunchyroll and getting a series made. I love it. That's what's up. Shout out to the Elbows, man. Big ups. For real. I hope this is a good series, though, because they're not the anime community is going to tell y'all. Whew, they, are, they, they, don't, they don't forgive. I just want to say, just, just, just know that. They don't forgive. They don't forgive shit. So if, you, if, this, is, if this is whack, they're going to trash y'all from, from now until God knows when. But anyway, I hope it's great. <laughs> so the Flash new final season details have been revealed. Oliver Queen will team up with Barry Allen one last time in the ninth and final season of The Flash. The CW announced that Stephen Amell, who starred as the title character in Arrow and also appeared in the spinoff of The Flash, will return as a guest star in episode 909, joining previously announced David Ramsey as John Diggle, a.k.a. Spartan, Kiannon Lionsdale, Wally West, a.k.a. Kid Flash, and Sendal Ramathui Ramsey, a.k.a. Bloodwork. So, they're bringing back everyone pretty much for this last season. We'll see what happens. Uh, me, on the other hand, I don't really care. Um, this has been a toxic relationship between myself and the CW with their DC properties. And, um, you know, I'm done. You know, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done with CW and uh, the DC properties. They, they, they've all just let me down every single time. I don't think this is going to be any better. So... I'll wait for someone to tell me about it. But if you guys check it out, please let me know. I'll be here all day. In other obvious news, Wednesday has been renewed for second season. So Netflix announced that the series Tim Burton's spinoff classic Adam's Family franchise has been renewed for a second season. The eight episode first season hit the streamer on November 23rd and has since become one of Netflix's most popular shows. The show beat out Dahmer to become the streamer's second most streamed series of all time, sitting only behind Stranger Things Season 4. I mean, come on now. Who didn't see this coming? We're going to see. Yeah, this this series is going to definitely get renewed. Now, who's to say how many times it's going to get renewed? Because, again, this is Netflix. They known for canceling something. But a season two for this, it was a no-brainer obviously shout out to everybody who worked on the project yeah this is gonna be a good one and finally we have gladiator 2 it's happening according to deadline gladiator 2 is finally happening and ridley scott is returning to helm the project the original gladiator which hit theaters back in 2000 was a blockbuster hit as well as a big win at the oscars the film won five awards including best picture best actor for russell crowe And now Ridley Scott is bringing Rome back to the big screen for the first time ever in his sequel. 
The new film stars Paul Mescal, best known for his role in the Hulu limited series Normal People. The Irish actor also starred in the critically acclaimed 2022 film After Sun, which is currently a contender during award season. He's also well known across social media as an up and coming heartthrob that audiences can't seem to get enough of. With Gladiator 2, Mescal will see his first time in a leading role from a major studio production. So let's see what happens. I mean, Gladiator 2, you know, I guess we were not entertained. <laughs> we, we, we need more. So uh, let's see what happens here. Um, if it's as good as the first one, it's going to rack up at the Oscars and uh, do its thing. So let's see what happens. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and hop into some life. Peace, love, and video games. That's all like Donkey Kong. That man is playing Galaga. All right, gamers, this is all I got for you right here. Sony at CES. Let's go. Here's what was revealed from the Juggernaut Company. Project Leonardo is PlayStation's brand new accessibility controller kit that is currently in development. There's no word yet on a release date or price, but Leonardo aims to, quote, remove barriers to gaming and help players with disabilities play more easily, more comfortably, and for longer periods on PS5. In quote, it was developed with contributors from accessibility experts, community members, and game developers. That's dope. I really like that they're doing that. Everyone should be able to enjoy playing video games for extended periods of time like anyone else. That's what's up. Let's go, Sony. Sony shared a first look at the upcoming Gran Turismo movie, which is set to hit theaters in August. The footage has words that Archie Madduck, Orlando Bloom, and David Harbour and showed off the movie's combination of real-life racing from Gran Turismo's action. From Gran Turismo action. Uh, Gran Turismo 7 will also have PSVR support with the new VR platform launching next month. The VR features will be available as a free upgrade for those that own Gran Turismo 7. VR Hit Beat Saber is also heading to PSVR 2, although a release date has not been announced. So, the world of Gran Turismo, doing some big things, getting a movie, going to, P- going to uh, PSVR 2. That's what's up. PlayStation's Jim Ryan announced on stage that PlayStation 5 has passed 30 million units sold. Ryan also stated that the PS5 shortage is essentially over, saying everyone who wants a PS5 should have a much easier time finding one at retailers globally starting from this point forward. The last official update we had on PS5 sale numbers was back in November when Sony revealed the console had surpassed 25 million units sold. So for those of you who don't have a PS5 yet and have not gone through heinous or overspending ways to get one, you now can walk into a retail store and just get one now, apparently. We're finally at that point two years later. (laughs) Wild, right? But that's the news right there from Sony. What do you guys think? Any thoughts? All right. Let's uh, speak technical for a moment. Technically speaking... Your technological advancements. 1.21 gigawatts. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Okay, technically speaking, Sony has more news from Consumer Electronics Show. Sony and Honda, which announced a joint venture last year to develop a electronic vehicle, has revealed the name of the brand new car. It will be called Afila. It was during the presentation at CES. Sony Honda Mobility Chief Executive Yasida Mizuno revealed a prototype of the company's first car, which looked like a mid-sized sedan, but he revealed little detail about it. The car will be available to order and even purchase in 2025, but the first deliveries of the car would not take place in North America until 2026. The car will be built at one of Honda's factories, quote, at the heart of its mobility experience, it's the word feel. Minzuno said, explaining that focus will be on sensing and interacting with people. 
The car will have safety and driver assistance systems from Honda along with entertainment and interactive features from Sony. When developing the car, the emphasis has been on software and user interface technology as much as on driving dynamics and performance. Running above the car's front bumper is a narrow exterior display screen the company calls the media bar. It will allow the vehicle to show information and interaction with people outside the vehicle. Inside, the company is working on an Unreal Engine's graphic technology from Epic. The company will produce Fortnite to design interfaces for the vehicle. Unreal Engine's technology has also been used by other auto brands, including GM, which use the technology in the Hummer EV. The car will come with a wealth of entertainment options, quote from Menzuno. Uh, this sounds like an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> with, I mean, the fact that there's going to be some sort of a media bar that's going to interact with people outside the vehicle, this is going to be a distraction. This car is going to be a huge distraction. Um, I'm not sure what entertainment options are going to be involved. I'm guessing it's going to integrate somehow with PS5. But, yeah, this car is going to not be great. I don't think it's going to be a great sale. I mean, some nerd's going to buy it, of course. But, yeah, nah, this this ain't the one right here, Honda. This ain't the one, Sony. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, look at the pictures. It looks okay, but nah, nah. This, this, this is gonna nah. I don't, I, I don't see it. Anyways, what do you guys think? This is. Would you buy this car? Would you buy it? Would you drive it? I mean, of course you would buy it and drive it. But I'm saying, like, do you think it's a great idea to even make it in the first place? Me, I don't know. All right, nerds, let's mark out. So what you gonna do? All right, people. We saw this coming, I guess. Maybe we didn't. Like, we saw it coming, but we chose to ignore it. But Vince McMahon is officially back in the WWE. Former WWE CEO Vince McMahon has officially returned to the wrestling organization's board of directors after rumblings of the move arose earlier this week. Vince McMahon has announced for the former WWE that he returned to the board, said chairwoman and CEO Stephanie McMahon, CEO Nick Khan, and chief content officer Paul Levesque in a joint statement. We also welcome back Michelle Wilson and George Barrios to our board of directors. Together, we are looking forward to exploring our strategic alternatives to maximize shareholder value. To make room for himself, Wilson and Barrios, McMahon removed former board members Joe Ellen Lyons Dylan and Jeffrey Speed and Alex Wexler from the board. Ignace Lahoud and Manjit Singh have also resigned from the board as of January 6th. So, with Vinnie Mac back, some people had to be fired to have that happen. And some people heard about that, they resigned. Vince, you are the cancer in your own body. And you need to go. Like, Away forever, permanently. Like, this is definitely going to trickle down to talent. This is not, this is no doubt going to trickle down to talent. At some point, he's going to somehow make a way for him to get the reins all over again. And people are just going to quit. Like, the big fact that a lot of people came back to WWE is because they don't want to work with Vincent Man. Like, with all the rumblings of people wanting to leave AEW and go back to WWE was because Vince was gone. I mean, definitely it was more of a combination of Vince being gone and now Triple H is in charge. But it's definitely more of the fact that Vince was gone. And now that he's back, maybe not in a creative capacity, but the fact that he's back, I don't know. 
but we'll keep our eyes and see what happens in the future with this. Well, from that rain cloud of a story, let's move on to something that was even more dope. New Japan Pro Wrestle Kingdom 17. Y'all, when I tell you this shit was fire, oh my God. For wrestling fans in the U.S., Wrestle Kingdom 17 took place in the wee hours of the morning on Wednesday from the legendary Tokyo Dome. Not only was this arguably the best Japanese wrestling event of the year, it was also notable because it featured talents from AEW, WWE, Stardom, and Pro Wrestling Noah. This makes Wrestle Kingdom 17 one of the biggest crossover events ever, but the focus was still on New Japan Pro Stars and Championships. It may have had people from other companies, but this was not being booked or billed as a forbidden door like event. Now, unless you were asleep, this was the first thing that you were reading Wednesday morning. Mercedes Monet makes her debut in New Japan Pro Wrestling. People assumed the former Sasha Banks would be a part of the show in some capacity, but until she actually came out from behind the curtain, it was all speculation. Not only did her arrival create a massive reaction on social media, but she immediately set herself up to be the next challenger for Kyrie's IWGP Women's Championship. On top of that, Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay stole the show with their United States Championship match, having Dave Meltzer give it a 6.25 stars, the second highest rating of any match he's ever given. And the fact that an Okada J. White heavyweight title had to follow that crazy right Wrestle Kingdom was amazing I love pro wrestling I hate sports entertainment Vince you have to go and that's how I feel so with that said and with the podcast in the bag I hope you all had a great time um yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and do what I do and get out of here thank you all for listening Please, please be sure to listen to this podcast. Subscribe to this podcast. Let your boy know what you think about the podcast. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. Check out the YouTube channel. Like, subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?